In the rich tapestry of human history, few figures have left as indelible a mark as the trio of Socrates, Plato, and Aristotle in ancient Greece. During a time when people attributed celestial events to the whims of the gods, these philosophers dared to challenge the prevailing beliefs and sought scientific explanations through reason and inquiry. Their revolutionary ideas and profound insights transformed the landscape of human thought, laying the foundation for modern philosophy and shaping our understanding of the world. For generations to come, their contributions to the history of humankind are nothing short of monumental, leaving an enduring legacy that continues to inspire and influence to this day. Today we will talk about Plato, a teacher, astronomer, and one of the finest philosophers in the history of humanity. Plato was the father of idealism, he founded an academy in Athens around 380 BCE, and his pupils were legendary names in history. That included the greats like Eudoxus, one of the greatest mathematical astronomy geniuses of that time. Plato believed that the solemn purpose of scientific study should be to discover the Creator's plan for the world. This philosophical sense about whether universe has a creator was rational and logical. The question he raised still has no answers yet. Even in this 21st century there is no philosophical or scientific answer to this question. In the 2300-year-old text, Plato mentions the shape of the universe being spherical, and then other than this, we find nothing astronomical inside that ancient text. This old text is named Phaedrus. Plato, in Phaedrus, assumed that heaven is a material sphere or a bell of crystal thrown over earth. The heaven concept started taking place in astronomy as time passed, but what is heaven? We found this heaven concept in religions too. This is a beautiful debate about whether a man created a god through his ideas or God created man and made him think of several ideas. This philosophical reasoning towards the higher power led not only just Greeks and Egyptians, but also the Hindus, Buddhists, Jains, and Babylonians to think about where the gods lived. The heavens played an essential role in monotheistic religions, too, and for every religion, it instilled a fear of righteousness inside the heart of humans. Plato drew a picture of a man waiting near the door of heaven. The waiting is for either a punishment or a reward, for whatever this man had done in his life, heaven shall reward and punish accordingly. Plato was a great name and a guide in Greek history, he wrote about Socrates' last words, and the most important thing is that Plato's pupil Aristotle was the teacher of Alexander the Great, king of Macedon. Plato mentored the philosophical life of Aristotle, and according to Plutarch, Alexander said that he owed his dignity to Aristotle. Historically this trio of Socrates, Plato, and Aristotle was influential. Plato's work is far more important than just creating jiggling ideas about the cosmos. Because so far, nobody has been confirmed. Because some said Earth is flat, cylindrical, and what not, some said this universe is geocentric, and some disagreed. Plato's records helped us identify the things generally accepted by the general public. Plato was more interested in how astronomy can be helpful in education and not in discovering natural phenomena. A person's greatness is often judged by the quality of their thoughts, and when those thoughts are written down well, they become immortal. Throughout history, we can see that great individual, like Newton and Galileo, were not only exceptional thinkers but also skilled writers. Their writings have preserved their profound ideas, inspiring future generations. The ability to express thoughts effectively through writing is a powerful tool for great authors, allowing their wisdom to transcend time and leave a lasting impact on humanity. Plato's writings were also famous during his time and are also pretty famous in the 21st century. The motion of planets is a combination of circular motion, this is what Plato's surviving writings indicate about the ancient Greek tradition. These writings also refer to Plato's views on the beauty of the universe. According to him, confusion and disorder were terrible, therefore, the divinity fabricated an orderly and beautiful universe. He wrote this in the book called Timaeus. In Timaeus, it is written that sun, moon, and the other five stars are made as wanderers who wander in circular orbits. But while wandering, these circles vary in size. 
If we connect the knowledge Plato wrote to our today's understanding, then he was slightly correct, as no orbits of planets in our solar system are the same size. Although you must keep in mind that the five stars mean the five planets. In his book Timaeus, Plato showed his prowess in the understanding of the planetary motions. Plato wrote, To describe the evolutions in the dance of these same gods, their juxtapositions, the counter evolutions, retrograde motions, of their circles relatively to one another, and their advances, increase in speed following retrogradation, to tell which of the gods come into line with one another at their conjunctions, and which in opposition, and in what order they pass in front of, transit, or behind one another, occultation, and at what periods they are severally hidden from our sight, eclipse, and again reappearing send to men who cannot calculate panic fears and signs of things to come, to describe all this without visible models of these same would be labor spent in vain. So this much shall suffice on this head, and let our account of the nature of the visible and generated gods end. Plato's contemplation of the cosmos and the workings of planets in the solar system is undoubtedly intriguing. However, what truly sets him apart is his profound pondering on the nature of reality. Even in today's era of quantum mechanics, the younger generation, like us, continues to grapple with unanswered questions about the nature of reality. As we seek to unravel the mysteries of our existence, we realize that this elusive concept shapes our future, and our past is an integral part of this enigmatic reality. When we close our eyes, we see nothing. But we can still feel the things around us even if our eyes are closed. What is real, and what is the reality? Real things exist, and they do not need proof for their existence. While the reality is the state of being real. For example, we all have intuitions about things that can be reality or fantasy. When you watch Lord of the Rings, you can intuitively say it is fiction, but if you are watching a documentary based on Elon Musk, then his success and struggle are the reality. What is real and fake? This debate is 5,000 years old. People discussed illusion, metaphysical realms, and intuitions. Plato also had his share of views on reality. According to him, reality exists only in the mind, so he gave an illustration. According to Plato, no artist can draw the perfect circle. No matter how skillful that artist is, the circle can never be perfect, and after sketching the circle, this reality of a perfect circle exists only in our minds, but it is not real to perceive that the drawn circle is the perfect circle. In other words, this can be explained as this reality exists not in our visible worlds but in our minds and thoughts. Plato's mind was philosophical, and philosophy doesn't ignore the knowledge-gaining process, thus, Plato mentioned this through the famous allegory of caves. In the allegory of caves, Plato gave an analogy to make his point about reality and how education can change it. He said, if you keep children as cave prisoners and shackle them for their entire life, then one day they will consider their shadow their reality, and there is. Still, the problem is that this shadow doesn't represent the men but only the statues, deceiving reality. Here Plato tried to show how education can change reality, those children in the cave were imprisoned for their entire life, and they had nothing but shackles restraining them from education. But an educated mind will perceive what shadow is. Although Plato believed that there was a God for the creation of this universe. But, when Plato thought about astronomy, he was more concerned about distinguishing between astronomy as apparent and real astronomy. The apparent astronomy is related to the same real astronomy in precisely the same way as practical geometry. He mainly focused on the rotational motions of the celestial bodies. The motion of the Sun, Moon, and Earth was a subject of great confusion for the people of ancient Greece. They initially believed that the Earth was the center of the universe. Still, over 300 years after Thales introduced the revolutionary concept of critical thinking, the Greek understanding of cosmology underwent a profound transformation. They gradually embraced the notion that the Earth revolved around the Sun, marking a significant shift in their worldview and remarkable progress in their understanding of celestial mechanics. In his book Timaeus, it is mentioned that the moon he placed in that nearest the earth. In the second above the earth, God placed the sun. 
Next, the morning star and that held sacred to Hermes he placed in those orbits, which proceed in a circle having equal speed with the sun but have the contrary tendency to it. Hence it is that the sun and the star of Hermes and the morning star overtake, and are in like manner overtaken by one another. And as to the rest, if we were to set forth the orbits in which he placed them, and the causes for which he did so, the account, though only by the way, would lay on us a heavier task than that which is our primary purpose. These things may perhaps hereafter receive proper treatment when we have leisure. In simple words, if I had to put this, then Plato wanted to say that universe is spherical, and spherical earth is at the center of the universe. Plato believed in the geocentric universe theory. The sun, moon, and the other five planets have their orbit and rotate with different angular velocities. In Greek science, the renowned four elements were air, water, earth, and fire. Plato, however, took the concept to the next level with his profound thinking. He sought to establish a relationship between these elements and solid geometric shapes, now famously known as the Platonic solids. According to Plato's theories, Earth was associated with the cube, water with the icosahedron, fire with the tetrahedron, and air with the octahedron. This innovative approach to linking the elements with geometric shapes Plato has had a lasting impact on various fields of study, including mathematics, philosophy, and science. We will keep bringing you the best if you show little support by subscribing, liking, and sharing us with your beloved ones.